Today, the Tundra gets some more storage. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you guys are all staying healthy and safe. Today, we're gonna go over the latest mod on the Tundra, and that is some extra storage due to the undercover swing case. Now, I'm always looking to add more storage to my cars and trucks, and I feel like these things are pretty badass. The only regret I really have about this, just so you guys know, is the fact that I didn't get two of them like right away. Um, today, we're just gonna go over on how to install the driver's side one, same process as on the passenger as well. What I really love about these things is the fact that we do have some cup holders on the top, little tool tray. It is lockable, so if you don't have a bed cover on your truck, you are able to lock this to secure your gear and cargo in there. Also, it does have a seal on the lid, so it is going to be weatherproof or weather resistant, which is really nice. So if I'm going out shooting, I would feel pretty comfortable with my guns in here and whatnot, or camera gear, etc. Right now, I just have a bunch of tools in here. It's really nice to be able to put my straps in here. You know, we got some straps, tow hook, like a little net, some basic hand tools. So, you know, that way it's not inside the cab. It's back here and out of the way and it's easily accessible. Operation on this thing, super simple. Pull the lever, it comes straight out. And again, this thing is super duper durable. Also, according to Undercover, this thing will hold up to 75 pounds. And I believe, it. I mean, this thing is super stout. Even though it's only about 15 pounds, the way it is, it's a really durable ABS plastic, it looks like. So, yeah, with that being said, we're gonna get into the install here. Um, make sure you guys watch the full entire install. I did have a slight issue with my template on the mounting bracket right here. It didn't quite line up, and you guys will see my work around with that, and you guys can learn from my mistakes on that. Also, let me know what you guys think about this. You know, for me, Again, I'm super stoked on it, especially because it kind of sits in the unused, you know, space behind the wheel well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the install. We will start by removing the taillight. To do so, remove the two 10 millimeter bolts securing the taillight to the truck bed. Then we will pull the taillight straight back. If this is your first time pulling the light off, this might be a bit stubborn, but it will pop off with a bit of force. Then go ahead and disconnect the wiring harness and put the light to the side. Next, we will prepare the paper template for the bracket installation. This can be found as the last page on the installation instructions. Cut the template out on the dotted line and cut out your drilling markers. Place the template onto the bed surface and align as shown in the install instructions. We'll go through and mark where we need to drill. One important call out, our paper template was slightly off and didn't match up with the bracket for the distance of the top and bottom mounting points. What I recommend doing in this case is marking the bottom holes Pulling the template off and using the bracket as a reference for the top holes or marking the correct top holes on the actual paper template by using the bracket as a reference. I will show my workaround as I already drilled the holes in the next few steps. Up next I'll go through and drill small pilot holes followed by four 1764 of an inch holes in each circle location. The drill should not drill any deeper than one inch and then I'll go through and add some paint to prevent any rust in the future. Up next, using the striker bracket as a template, mark the inside of the bed where we need to drill. The striker bracket should sit on top and in between these two tires. Use the install instructions as a reference if you need to. Then we will go through and drill the four 1764 of an inch holes in the composite bed side. Next up, we will install the bolt plates. Start by removing the protective film from the adhesive and ensure that the area where the adhesive must stick is clear of dirt and debris. And always be careful as burrs and edges can be sharp. Then we will install the bolt plates from the inside of the bed wall. We should be able to access the back mounting bracket holes by reaching in behind the taillight axis. And to access the striker plate holes, reach inside the bed wall from underneath the truck. Then we'll go through and install the striker plate using the provided hardware and tighten everything down. Up next, we will move to the back of the truck to install the swing case bracket. As mentioned earlier, our holes don't match up perfectly and are off by a few millimeters. To solve for this, I'm using a step drill bit to enlarge the diameter of the bolt plate holes, and this shouldn't affect the structural integrity of the mounts. Next up, we'll go through and install the bracket and using the provided hardware, we'll tighten everything down. Next, we will install the swing case by aligning the openings of the case bracket to the pins of the truck bracket and simply dropping it down. Finally, we will install the pivot lock and using the provided key, lock it into place.
And there we have it for the install on this bad boy. I will give yourself about 30 to 45 minutes to do this. You know, it's a very simple install. Another thing I need to mention is that this guy will work with any bed cover on the market, which is really nice as well. And you are able to run two of these cases. Let me know what you guys think about the build so far. Drop me a comment below, drop me a like. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If the audio is loud, I'm sorry, I'm right next to a little creek right here. So until next time, I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you.